multiple gifts, but we are given at least one gift. And we are responsible to use it for the Lord. This second thing I note in this passage of Scripture, that it's given according to the measure that Christ chooses. According to what He chooses to give us and how much He chooses to give us. God won't give us more temptation than we can stand. He also will not give us even more gift than we can use. We are designed to use His gift and develop those gifts as He has given them to us. According to His will, He's the one that determines what gifts to give us because He knows us better than we know ourselves, right? He knows us through and through. Uh, and He knows what is best for us. And according to how He has made us and what He knows about us, He gives us gifts according to His will and according to His measure. Uh, and then His ascension gives Him the authority to give those gifts. It was, he wasn't just the one who descended to this earth to live an example life. But he ascended back to God after he died on the cross so that he could sit at the right hand of the Father and with authority give to us what we need. Because he is God. Right? Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And with that authority, he gives according to his will. He gives according to his measure the gift that we need for our lives, a gift that we can use for His glory and for the good of the church. What are some of those gifts? There are three lists of gifts in the Bible. Uh, there is a, a list in 1 Corinthians 12. You've, you've heard that list many times and um, and you are fortunate this morning. I developed this sermon <laughs> originally with a complete listing of those gifts as well <laughs> and with the, what God says about those gifts. But I figured you didn't want to be here till 11 o'clock <laughs> on one setting to greet the team when they came. <laughs> but there's a, a wonderful gift, and you're welcome to read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, a list of gifts that he's given. Also, uh, in Romans chapter 12, uh, there he expands on a, a list of gifts, uh, and with that list of gifts, he, he warns us to use our gifts for the right reasons and to not be jealous of one another's gifts, but to use the gifts that God has given us because He knows best. And then, finally, this passage in Ephesians 4. He lists some, some different uh, gifts that He gives. Now, each of these lists are different. What does that mean? I think it means two things. First of all, God has lots of gifts to give. Uh, and each of these gifts are not meant to be exclusive. God may have some gifts He didn't put in one of these lists, right? The gifts and talents that He gives us to use for His glory. I'm just saying that He has all kinds of ways of, of giving us what we need to serve Him and to glorify Him and to help one another. He has all kinds of ways. And each of us are unique in, in the fact that He has given us the gifts that will bless others when we use them according to His will. So He has given us gifts. Here He lists some of them, some as apostles, uh, that word means one who is sent with a commission. Jesus had many disciples, but he had 12 that he recognized as apostles. And those apostles, uh, a disciple is a follower or a learner, but an apostle is a divinely appointed representative. Now, I, I know that those 12 apostles certainly fit that characteristic. And Paul himself uh, I think they made a mistake and when they elected Matthias. I think Paul was supposed to be number 12. <laughs> but no, I, I don't think you can really say the Bible makes a mistake. That, that could be wrong, right? It's a good thing I'm up here in case the lightning falls, right? <laughs> but Paul certainly called himself an apostle because he met the same qualifications. He was the divinely appointed by God to be a representative of God. Uh, in some sense, we all have a divine appointment, right? And so we can be, in that sense, an apostle. But here is a special, uh, special representative of God that he speaks about when he says some as apostles, some as prophets. Prophets, and oftentimes we think of prophet as somebody who foretells the future. 
Uh, and there were some real, <laughs> there was both a blessing and a danger to that, wasn't it? Prophets, if you read the Bible, didn't have a great time most of the time. <laughs> they had kind of a rough life because they were speaking the word of God to folks who didn't want to hear it. But I, I think there's a greater sense than just telling the future. We have so much about the future already recorded in God's word, don't we? Uh, we don't really need a whole lot more uh, details about the future. We have enough to live our life by right now. A prophet in a fuller meaning in the Greek is uh, a someone who forth tells, not just foretells. He tells forth the word of God. We have lots of, of God's word in, in, in our hands when we have a Bible in our hands. And somebody who is given that uh, gift is able to proclaim in, in a, a good fashion, in a, a fashion that can be received, what the word of God is and, and, and what God is saying in his word. He can tell forth the word of God. Uh, and I think that in some sense we all have that responsibility as well. It goes on to say some were given as evangelists. Evangelists. Have you ever been somebody around somebody that you knew had the gift of evangelism? We all have the responsibility of evangelism. In Matthew uh, 28, 19, and 20 is for all of us. Go ye therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them whatsoever commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. That wasn't just given to a few folks. That was given to everybody that was gathered there that day. And it's given by proxy to all of us as well as Christians, right? That's the Great Commission. That's what we're all called to do. But if you've been around somebody with a gift of evangelism, it seems like God just sets them up every place they go to be able to easily share, naturally share, the gospel with somebody. And it seems like <laughs> those folks are so much re more responsive to them when they have the gift of evangelism. That's a tremendous gift. I'd like to see more people exercising the gift of evangelism, wouldn't you? I'd like for all of us to exercise the responsibility of evangelism, but boy, that gift of evangelism is something. And we just praise God for those who are gifted that way. Then it goes on to describe others who have the gift as pastors and teachers. Pastor means shepherd. A shepherd indicating that the, the local body is a flock of sheep. Uh, now, I don't know. Have you ever been around sheep? Yeah. I wouldn't want to be a shepherd of a flock of sheep. <laughs> uh, they sometimes go where they want to, despite where the shepherd wants them to go. It may be true sometimes in local churches, but isn't it great when our great shepherd, Jesus Christ, is the ultimate shepherd to the church? His under-shepherds, the pastors and teachers of the church, are following him, and so the church can follow together them. You understand what I'm saying? That's what a pastor is to be. A pastor is to be following Jesus so closely that if you follow the same path that the pastor is going and you're following Jesus as the pastor is following Jesus, then the church moves forward the direction God wants it to move. Amen? That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. And pastors are given a gift to be able to shepherd the sheep in the direction that God wants them to go. Uh, his responsibility is to feed and lead the flock. To feed and lead the flock. I hope that as you come to Life Group, again, can you flash that, that name tag, the Life Group? <laughs> That's our Life Group director here today. As you come to Life Group and as you come to worship, I pray that you get fed that you get fed. And later on, as we have growth groups and as we have accountability groups, and you choose to, to, to get some meat as well as milk, as you choose to get deeper and deeper into the Word of God, I pray that you are fed and led the right direction by the pastors and teachers in God's church. The Word of God is a local church's protection and provision. Actually, no amount of entertainment, potlucks, I don't know about that. Or other <laughs> religious substitute can take the place of the Word of God. If you're not feeding on the Word of God, it doesn't matter how much fried chicken you eat at church. <laughs> you may grow, but it's going to be that dresser growth. <laughs> the middle drawer sticking out instead of 
the growth that God really has for you. We get fed by God's word. Amen? And pastors and teachers have that responsibility to help feed the flock for the one purpose. Now, I talked to, to you about uh, how we are one body or one puzzle. That we have many pieces. The final thing I want us to see is that we have only one purpose. One purpose as a church, ultimately. And that is, as it's related here in this scripture, uh, Paul goes on to say, for the equipping, in verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of, of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Because God has given us the purpose of the equipping of the saints for the work of service. Don't think that you come to church just to know more. Because you can know all kinds of facts. You're not wise until you begin to apply the knowledge that you have. Isn't that right? So he says it's not just for the, the purpose of, of the saints being built up in their knowledge, but it's in the purpose for the saints being built up in knowledge so that they can grow in the Lord, so that they can become better, so they can apply it in their service, in their service. If knowledge doesn't result in service, then how much wiser are you? If knowledge doesn't change your life for the better, then I, have you really gained anything from it? To know a bunch of facts is not enough. To, but to be able to apply